The Kitarites Chinese, Ji Duo Luo Jiduolo, were a dynasty that ruled Bactria and adjoining parts of Central Asia and South Asia in the 4th and 5th centuries CE. The Kitarites belonged to a complex of peoples known collectively in India as the Huna and or in Europe as the Zionites from the Iranian names XWN, Zion. The Huna, Zionite tribes are often linked, albeit controversially, to the Huns who invaded Eastern Europe during a similar period. Named after Kadara, their founding ruler and purported membership of a clan named Ki, the Kitarites appear to have been a part of a Huna horde known in Latin sources as the Kermishiones from the Iranian Karmir Zion or Red Huna. The Kitarites established the first of four major Zionite Huna states in Central Asia, followed by the Hephthalites, the Alchon, and the Nezik. In 360–370 CE, a Kitarite kingdom was established in Central Asian regions previously ruled by the Sasanian Empire, replacing the Kushano Sasanians in Bactria. Thereafter the Sasanian Empire roughly stopped at Merv. <inaudible> Origins A nomadic people, the Kitarites appear to have originated in the Altai Mountains region. Some scholars believe that the Kitarites were Europid in appearance, with some East Asian e. Mongoloid admixture. On Kitarite coins their rulers are depicted as beardless or clean-shaven, a feature of Inner Asian cultures at the time as opposed, for example, to the Iranian cultures of South Central Asia at the time. The Kitarites were depicted as mounted archers on the reverse of coins. They were also known to practice artificial cranial deformation. The Kitarites appear to have been synonymous with the Karmir Zion, Red Zionites, or, more controversially, Red Huns, a major subdivision of the Zionites, alongside the Spet Zion, White Zionites. The name of their eponymous ruler Kadara Florida, 350-385 CE may be cognate with the Turkic word Kitarti meaning West suggesting that the Kitarites were originally the westernmost of the Zionites, and the first to migrate from Inner Asia. Chinese sources suggest that when the Uar Wa Wa were driven westward by the later Zhao state, circa 320 CE, from the area around Pingyang, Pingyang modern Linfun, Shaanxi, it put pressure on Zionite-affiliated peoples, such as the Kitarites, to migrate. Another theory is that climate change in the Altai during the 4th century caused various tribes to migrate westward and southward. Contemporary Chinese and Roman sources suggest that, during the 4th century, the Kitarites began to encroach on the territory of Greater Khorasan and the Kushan Empire, migrating through Transoxiana into Bactria, where they were initially vassals of the Kushans and adopted many elements of Kushano Bactrian culture. The Kitarites also initially put pressure on the Sasanian Empire, but later served as mercenaries in the Sasanian army, under which they fought the Romans in Mesopotamia, led by a chief named Grumbates Florida, 353 CE. Some of the Kitarites apparently became a ruling dynasty of the Kushan Empire, leading to the epithet, Little Kushans. Kitarite Kingdom. Topic. Sources The first 4th century evidence are gold coins discovered in bulk dating from c. 380, where Kadara is usually interpreted in a legend in the Bactrian language. Most other data we currently have on the Kitarite kingdom are from Chinese and Byzantine sources from the middle of the 5th century. The Kitarites were the first Huna to bother India. Indian records note that the Huna had established themselves in modern Afghanistan and the northwest frontier province by the first half of the 5th century, and the Gupta emperor Skandagupta had repelled a Huna invasion in 455. The Kitarites are the last dynasty to regard themselves on the legend of their coins as the inheritors of the Kushan Empire, which had disappeared as an independent entity two centuries earlier. Migration into Bactria Around 350, the Sasanian emperor Shapur II ruled 309 had to interrupt his conflict with the Romans, and abandon the siege of Nisibis. In order to face nomadic threats in the east, he was attacked in the east by Scythian Masajtay and other Central Asian tribes. 
Around this time, Zeonite, Huna tribes, most likely the Kidarites, whose king was Grumbates, make an appearance as an encroaching threat upon Sasanian territory as well as a menace to the Gupta Empire 320-500 CE. After a prolonged struggle 353-358 they were forced to conclude an alliance, and their king Grumbates accompanied Shapur II in the war against the Romans, agreeing to enlist his light cavalrymen into the Persian army and accompanying Shapur II. The presence of Grumbates, king of the Chianite, and his Zeonites with Shapur II during campaigns in the western Caspian lands, in the area of Corduene, is described by the contemporary eyewitness Ammianus Marcellinus. Grumbates shonatarum rex novus etate quidum media rugosisque membris sed mente quadum grandifica multisque victoriarum insignibus nobilis. Grumbates, the new king of the Zeonites, while he was middle-aged, and his limbs were wrinkled, he was endowed with a mind that acted grandly, and was famous for his many, significant victories." The presence of Grumbates alongside Shapur II is also recorded at the successful siege of Amida in 359, in which Grumbates lost his son. Grumbates, king of the Chianite, went boldly up to the walls to effect that mission, with a brave body of guards, and when a skillful reconnoiterer had noticed him coming within shot, he let fly his ballista, and struck down his son in the flower of his youth, who was at his father's side, piercing through his breastplate, breast and all, and he was a prince who in stature and beauty was superior to all his comrades." Quote, Later the alliance fell apart, and by the time of Barham IV the Sasanians had lost numerous battles against the Kitarites. The migrating Kitarites then settled in Bactria, where they replaced the Kushano Sasanids, a branch of the Sasanids that had displaced the weakening Kushans in the area two centuries before. It is thought that they were in firm possession of the region of Bactria by 360 CE. Since this area corresponds roughly to Kushanshar, the former western territories of the Kushans, Kidarite ruler Kadara called himself, Kadara king of the Kushans. On his coins, according to Priscus, the Sasanian Empire was forced to pay tribute to the Kidarites, until the rule of Yazgurd II ruled 438-457, who refused payment. The Kidarites based their capital in Samarkand, where they were at the center of Central Asian trade networks, in close relation with the Sogdians. The Kidarites had a powerful administration and raised taxes, rather efficiently managing their territories, in contrast to the image of barbarians bent on destruction given by Persian accounts. Expansion to northwest India The Kidarites consolidated their power in northern Afghanistan during the 420s before conquering Peshawar and part of northwest India, then turning north to conquer Sogdiana in the 440s. The Kidarites were cut from their Bactrian nomadic roots by the rise of the Hephthalites in the 450s. The Kidarites also seem to have been defeated by the Sasanian emperor Paraz in 467 CE, with Paraz reconquering Balkh and issuing coinage there as Paraz King of Kings. It is probably the rise of the Hephthalites and the defeats against the Sasanians which pushed the Kidarites into northern India. Topic: <laughs> Conflicts with the Gupta Empire. The Kidarites may have confronted the Gupta Empire during the rule of Kumaragupta I, 414 C, 455 CE, as the latter recounts some conflicts, although very vaguely, in his Mansur inscription. The Bitari pillar inscription of Skandagupta, inscribed by his son Skandagupta c. 455 c. 467 CE, recalls much more dramatically the near annihilation of the Gupta Empire, and recovery though military victories against the attacks of the Pushyamitras and the Hunas. The Kidarites are the only Hunas who could have attacked India at the time, as the Hephthalites were still trying to set foot in Bactria in the middle of the 5th century. In the Bitari inscription, Skandagupta clearly mentions a conflagrations with the Hunas, even though some portions of the inscription have disappeared. Skandagupta, by whose two arms the earth was shaken, when he, the creator of a disturbance like that of a terrible whirlpool, joined in close conflict with the Hunas, among enemies, arrows, proclaimed, just as if it were the roaring of the river Ganga, making itself noticed in their ears. After these encounters, the Kidarites seem to have retained the western part of the Gupta Empire. 
The Huna invasion are said to have seriously damaged Indo-Roman trade relations, which the Gupta Empire had greatly benefited from. The Guptas had been exporting numerous luxury products such as silk, leather goods, fur, iron products, ivory, pearl or pepper from centers such as Nasik, Pathan, Pataliputra or Benares etc. The Huna invasion probably disrupted these trade relations and the tax revenues that came with it. Conflict with Sasanian Emperor Paraz I and the Hephthalites Around 457, the Kidarites were again in conflict against the Sasanians under Yazdegerd II. A. Kidarite dynasty, south of the Oxus, was at war with the Sassanids in the 5th century. The Sasanian emperor Paraz I ruled 459-484 fought Kadara and then his son Kungas, forcing Kungas to leave Bactria. The Kidarites, who had established themselves in parts of Transoxiana during the reign of the Sasanian king Shapur II, and had a long history of conflicts with the Sasanians. The latter stopped paying tributes to Kidarites in the early 460s, thus starting a new war between these two states. During the start of the war, however, Paraz did not have enough manpower to fight them, and therefore asked for financial aid by the Byzantine Empire, who declined his request. Paraz then offered peace to the leader of the Kidarites, Kunkas, and offered him his sister in marriage. However, Paraz tried to trick Kunkas, and sent a woman of low status instead. After some time Kunkas found about Paraz's false promise, and then in turn tried to trick him, by requesting him to send military experts to strengthen his army. However, when a group of 300 military experts arrived to the court of Kunkas at Balam either the same city as Balkh or a city in Sogdia, they were either killed or disfigured and sent back to Iran, with the information that Kunkas did this due to Peroz's false promise. What happened after remains obscure, it is only known that by 467, Peroz, with Hephthalite aid, reportedly managed to capture Balam possibly Balkh and put an end to Kidarite rule in Transoxiana once and for all. Although the Kidarites still controlled some places such as Gandhara and Punjab, they would never be an issue for the Sasanians again. <inaudible> Kidarite successors Many small Kidarite kingdoms seems to have survived in northwest India up to the conquest by the Hephthalites during the last quarter of the 5th century. They are known through their coinage. They were particularly present in Jammu and Kashmir, such as King Vinayaditya, but their coinage was much debased. The Kidarites were soon overwhelmed by the Hephthalites. By 520, Gandhara was definitely under Hephthalite control. According to Chinese pilgrims, the Alchon followed the Kidarites into India circa 500, invading Indian territory as far as Iran and Kasambi. Ananya Shirakatsi states in his Ashkaratsuts, written in 7th century, that one of the Bulgar tribes, known as the Kidar were part of the Kidarites. The Kidar took part in Bulgar migrations across the Volga into Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Main Kidarite rulers <laughs> See also UAR Iranian Huns Topic References and Notes Topic Sources Zimel EV 1996 The Kidarite Kingdom in Central Asia History of Civilizations of Central Asia, Volume 3, The Crossroads of Civilizations, AD 250-750. Paris, UNESCO. pp. 119-135. ISBN 92-3-103211-9. Anoki, K., On the Date of the Kidarites I, Memoirs of the Research Department of the Toyo Bunko, 27, 1969, p. 1-26. Grenet, F. Regional Interaction in Central Asia and Northwest India in the Kidarite and Heftalite period, in Sims Williams, N. Ed., Indo Iranian Languages and Peoples, Proceedings of the British Academy, London, 2002, p. 203 224.